A very warm welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. My name is Stephen Mufunyi. Now, statistics indicate that around 20% of Rwanda's youth is unemployed. One of the solutions the government came up with to curb unemployment is creation of business centers where skills are sharpened and production facilities provided. How responsive are they to this issue and what are some of the challenges? Stay tuned for more on that. Shop in Muhanga District, Southern Province. 25 year old Eli Quizera is busy cutting and shaping timbers to make a bed for a customer. He's been doing this since 2017 when he completed a one year training in carpentry. He says he can generate enough income to cater for himself and his family. With the money I make here, I can cater for not only my own needs but also my family. I'm not married yet. I live with my mother and we are better now. In the eastern city of Nyamata, Donatiel Mukakarara is inspecting her fellow tailors who used to have shops in different neighborhoods across the city before they formed a cooperative. Our levels of knowledge are not the same. One may be working alongside someone who's good at making suits and he or she a dressmaker. In that case, they share knowledge. The place where these artisans are accommodated is known as Integrated Craft Production Center or Agakiriro. These centers were created back in 2014 to foster technical skills and curb unemployment rates especially among the youth. The idea was initially conceived in 2012 and aimed to bring scattered operators together. They were trying to, to seek for initiatives which can uh, help the government to solve the issue of youth unemployment. Uh, what we do uh, once the ICPC is fully constructed, we mobilize working with the local government. Uh, artisans are scattered here and there in the district. We mobilize them and um, organize them so that they can uh, be working in a decent place that is the ICPC. The pilot labor force survey of February 2016 showed that unemployment rate among the youth stood at 15.9%. In May 2019, the rate had increased to 18.2%, according to the same survey. These centers are assured in the arm for job creation efforts as they offer TVS students an opportunity to improve their skills and increase prospects of self-employment, especially from off-farm activities. It's the second week since I started my internship here. I've acquired a lot of skills, such as making doors, windows, and so forth. We help interns from technical and vocational schools because what they learn isn't sufficient. They normally learn to make windows and other furniture, but when they come here, we teach them how to make house gates and designs, among other things, that they don't cover at school. Considering that we have only a small size of um, uh, acreage in Rwanda for agriculture, so it makes sense that we diversify, we get our young people into other sectors uh, and, and manufacturing, now is actually leading in terms of a uh, uh, bigger share of economy. So if we can become uh, high-tech, uh, knowledge-based, doing things very, um, very efficiently. There are currently 24 ICPCs across the country, and the fact that these centers can help in skills development and income generation to the surrounding communities justifies the need to construct even more. It is very, very useful uh, mainly to the young generation, to the, uh, to the people, uh, to the community in general, uh, because it helps 
in getting uh, even the cheaper uh, materials they can use in their homes, like cardboards, like uh, chairs, tables, uh, close to their neighborhood, their community, and they, they can use them uh, in their in their uh, everyday life. And uh, again, uh, this uh, center is 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 the first uh, job uh, provide jobs to the to the people in the community like uh, cleaners security guards uh, uh, technicians like electricians to, for installations uh, like uh, water technician uh, plumbers to, to install the plumber in, in in the center so uh, in general it is the job providing uh, in the community. We started by uh, constructing uh, one per district, one per district, but now we are shifting to one to more, depending uh, of the needs of uh, a, a given district. Yeah, now we are working with um, the local government to see uh, how we can raise more funds to, to have more ICPC constructed ac ac across a given district, but also we are mobilizing the private sector. Because uh, in some districts, for example, you may find that the ICPC was constructed by the private sector. Yeah, example, in Kichukiro, we have a, an ICPC constructed uh, by, by it's a, a PPP, uh, but the, 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 the district uh, provided the land and the, the private se sector constructed the ICPCs and it's managing yeah, the, the constructed uh, premises. It's a hive of activity at Muhanga Integrated Craft Production Center, one of the many that are established across the country. According to statistics, it employs over 100 people involved in carpentry and welding, among other activities. <laughs> When we brought them together, they started to provide employment to other people. As you'll see when you walk around, between 100 and 150 people are employed here. Apart from getting a decent place to work from, knowledge sharing and peer learning are also important aspects that make up a great deal of benefits they wouldn't have got while working separately. We used to work in chaotic places with no shelter, and in most cases, our products could get damaged. We later joined the hands, and on top of sharing knowledge, it's easy for customers to locate us. Our levels of knowledge are one may be working alongside someone who is good at making suits and he or she a dressmaker. In that case, they share knowledge with each other easily and at no cost. Under the Made in Rwanda program, the government aims to promote consumption of locally made products. However, Lack of knowledge and means to buy sophisticated machines is a hindrance to the quality and competitiveness of local products, some of which are made in these centers. Many people here, they didn't go to schools, they didn't have any particular uh, training, and they only learn uh, on the ground. They only learn uh, wood making on the ground. The first thing they need is the capacity building, trainings, Secondly, it's a, uh, let me say, like loans to get materials, like uh, uh, money to buy machines, uh, money to buy uh, materials, all kind of materials they need to use. They, they, they need uh, loans or uh, some um, development partners to provide them uh, with those materials, but mainly all they need is the knowledge, is the capacity building, is the trainings. Uh, if they can get uh, that kind of uh, knowledge, trainings, and that uh, uh, loans to get materials, that can be good for them to produce every kind of materials they need. To address this, 
A new policy to guide the implementation of the Made in Rwanda initiative was put in place to increase competitiveness of local products and ultimately increase industrial contribution to GDP to 21% in 2024 from 17 currently. There was first a Made in Rwanda initiative, then we decided to make it a policy. Uh, which is built on uh, five pillars. One, you know, improving the quality of locally made products, uh, reducing, uh, you know, their cost of production so that they become competitive, promoting backward linkages and looking at all the whole value chains and, uh, you know, and having sector-specific plans. And that's all on today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Remember to send your feedback on email at dbirwa at abn360.com. Tweet us at dbirwanda or myself at Stephen Muvunyi. Thanks for watching.